Hey folks, everything new under the sun. I'm just working on my timeline of the return of the Lord. Uh, as I've always suggested, you know, I'm going to shift this as my understanding uh, increases as we get closer to, um, you know, uh, the return of the Lord. <clears throat> as we see world events happening, um, I'm going to shift this. And I, I figured I'd just give you a, a bit of a sneak peek and kind of talk through it. Uh, first of all, though, I want to show an interesting thing uh, that I found on Wikipedia of all uh, places. I was looking at timelines of the history of the world, um, and um, I'm considering the 6,000-year timeline as uh, written down, described in the Bible, from Adam uh, to the flood of Noah and up until today. So the history is pretty clear in the Bible, the timeline, um, the generations uh, that are uh, recorded and described there. And, uh, you know, it, the earth is about 6,000 years old at this point in time. Again, from Adam through the flood uh, and during biblical times up until now. And we're nearing the year 6,000. Well, I, I was looking at this and I thought, well, there's obviously not going to be anything uh, anywhere near Christian on Wikipedia. Um, but sometimes they say interesting things. And I was reading this bit here, uh, and they list timelines, and it says, History, these timelines of world history detail recorded events since the creation of writing. And when was the creation of writing? Oh, that was roughly 5,000 years ago to the present day. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and, uh, you know, on, on the Lord's timeline, biblically speaking, the earth, uh, uh, Adam is, uh, uh, was around about 6,000 years ago. Uh, so they're pretty close. Interesting to use the word creation. What, uh, was Adam able to write? Well, I suspect he very much was. Uh, in fact, uh, I think humans started out very, very smart. Remember, Adam had to name and remember all the creatures that God had created. He was very smart, and he was taught by, obviously, a very smart teacher, God, uh, the all-powerful, all-knowing uh, God. He was taught directly by him. So Adam was very, very smart, and it's the idea of entropy. We are getting uh, basically less and less intelligence, less and less strong, less and less healthy. Uh, as the world degrades, too, as the world winds down, uh, it gets, um, uh, you know, it's, it's spinning, is slowing, and all the things about uh, creation uh, and man are kind of winding down to their, uh, you know, ultimate uh, death. And now the Lord's going to return before, you know, the earth stops spinning, before the sun run, runs out of energy, etc. But that's the idea of, of entropy uh, from order to disorder over time. And that's the, always the way things go. But, you know, sometimes Wikipedia gets it right. So roughly 5,000 years is uh, basically uh, the recorded events of world history. And, and that's that's pretty close to being how old the earth is. So we're getting up to uh, 6,000 years of man. And, um, you know, the, the milestone event is really the death of uh, Jesus on uh, the cross. Death and resurrection, that's the big milestone event. Um, the one that uh, opens up a new day, a new day of grace and salvation for those who accept um, that in Jesus Christ. And that kicks off the last two days of the history of the world, or six days. Remember, God created the world, the earth, uh, everything that in uh, everything that is in it in six days, and on the seventh he rested. So in like pattern, pattern equals prophecy to the Jews, in like pattern, he will give six days to man, or 6,000 years. And the Bible says a day to the Lord is a 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is like a day. And so we have uh, about 6,000 years. And I would suggest that, you know, God is very accurate. He's very precise. Uh, not very. He is uh, perfectly precise and perfectly accurate. <clears throat> he created this finely tuned world and system. And uh, so I believe, just like the six days of creation, we are here for 6,000 years. And so we're quickly approaching uh, that 6,000 years. Now, it's recorded, I believe it is in Psalm 90, um, uh, that man is afforded 70 years, but if by reason of strength, 80. So uh, uh, three score and 10 or four score years. Now, a score is, is 20 years. <clears throat> and in 2018, Israel as a nation um, celebrated... 
uh, their 70th anniversary from beca- uh, becoming a nation in 1948. That kind of kicked off the last days. Um, that was uh, Israel as a nation, as a people, <clears throat> growing, uh, growing up. You know, is a, is a na- can a nation be born in one day? Exactly. Uh, that's exactly what happened uh, uh, in May 1948. And so a nation was born in a day, born in a day, and they grew up through uh, tw- the year 2018, 70 years old and an, as a nation. Uh, but if by reason of strength, God gave them strength, God, um, uh, you know, saved them through the uh, Six-Day War in 1967. <clears throat> I remember, uh, um, well, anyways, there's an interesting pattern of uh, six days there. Uh, and so God gave them strength. And I will. I believe they will have strength until the year 2028. Now, I don't know why I didn't see this before, um, but I thought the seven-year period ended in 2028, and that was, um, uh, you know, kind of the, the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> well, it is the second coming of Christ. It's also the rapture. And I believe it makes a lot of sense, in fact, that the wrath of God doesn't start until 2028. And I believe that the wrath of God happens at the midpoint of the seven-year period. So, in fact, my timeline was off. I had, um, and, you know, I don't exactly know when it's going to start, but I'm just putting puzzle pieces together. And it it makes sense that, in fact, 2028, or the end of 6,000 years of man, uh, that would be God's, the end of God's timeline, where he says, okay, you know, I've given you this amount of time. He created the earth in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. I've I've uh, I, I've given uh, the people of the earth a certain uh, lifespan, six thousand years, and for the nation as an Israel born in 1948 through to 2028 would be 80 years. That would be a full life according to Psalm 90 there, and and that reference. And so, it makes sense that that is his red line when the Jews are allowed to kind of um, stay as a nation up until that point. And then at that point, that's when the wrath of God falls. So 2028, the wrath of God, probably around the new year there, Rosh Hashanah, um, on the Jewish calendar. <clears throat> so my my lines may not be exactly 100% accurate, um, but that would put um, the uh, beginning of the first three and a half years uh, sometime at the beginning of 2024. And I say that because it's three and a half years. So if you come back from, you know... Um, uh, 2028, three and a half years. Um, that puts us around uh, the months of Adar or Nisan, uh, February to April 2024. Now, this is not particularly accurate. Um, you know, does uh, does 2028, or rather the year 6000, does it actually end at uh, Rosh Hashanah uh, in the year 2027, which is September, October time frame? You know, I don't know exactly, and I'm still working on this. Um, but, you know, it could be uh, that... 2024 could really indicate somewhere in there the kickoff of this first three and a half years, which is not the wrath of God. It is the seals of Revelation chapter 6. If you read Revelation chapter 6, and I have it here, it describes, let me go here, it describes the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I saw the Lamb opened one of the seals. So Jesus Christ opening the seals. And I heard, as it were, a th- noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw a white horse, and he, sat, he that ha- sat on him had a crown, and, uh, and a crown was, had a bow, rather, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Some people have related that to the coronavirus, the crown. Uh, corona means uh, crown. Uh, so, anyways, this uh, verses, uh, you know, 2 through uh, 7 uh, record um, the first four seals. Um, uh, you know, the four horsemen of the, of the apocalypse. Uh, actually go through 8, uh, verse 8 there, uh, with ending with the pale horse. So that describes the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Then as we go down further, and I believe this is all the, you know, the beginnings of sorrows. It actually uh, <clears throat> says that, uh, that this is the beginning uh, of sorrows. Uh, and it uh, goes through, that's in Matthew 24, it goes through and says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. So this is people slain for the word of God 
through the history of men who who've been you know in Abraham's bosom, uh, you know, waiting in in they're in uh, paradise basically, waiting for the rapture of the church and the rapture of the saints, the taking up of those uh, faithful in Christ, and of course the dead in Christ rise first, right? And so we have these souls who are waiting around, who have died, who were slain for the word of God. Not just the tribulation saints, I don't believe, but all other people. And they cried with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge the earth? This is after the four horsemen of the apocalypse ride, verses 1 through 8, right? The seals, the the, the so-called uh, judgments um, opening, uh, being opened up. And after that, how long uh, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So these, these are all the souls of the, of the saints and saying you are not judging them. So your wrath is not coming. Where is your wrath? So the wrath of God has not started at this point. Read Revelation chapter 6 slowly. Read the whole thing. And from the beginning to the end, tell me if you believe that the, uh, the seals, at least the four horse and the apocalypse described there, are the wrath of God. Or, if you read this chronologically, uh, is it suggesting that the saints are saying, you know what, your, the, your wrath hasn't come, that you have not judged yet. Maybe the four horse and the apocalypse are basically uh, the wrath of Satan on the people of the world, <clears throat> ultimately, and, you know, the consequences of our own sin and the things that we have created, um, you know, so-called climate change and all these things. And, and, uh, the dis disagreements man has were marching to war. And so these aren't the wrath of God. And I, <clears throat> I said that for a while. So, you know, where, how, where are you, Lord? How come you aren't avenging our blood on the earth? <clears throat> and then verse 12 says, six seals. So this is chronological. One seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal. And then the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. So now this is uh, the, whoops, this is, let me go here. This is the sun and the moon going dark. Now I have a solar eclipse. Uh, is that the sun and the moon going dark? Well, that's the moon covering up the sun and, and they both look dark at that point. Um, or are they actually going dark for some other reason? You know, volcanic eruption, there's ash in the sky, that sort of thing. Regardless, this is a turning point. This is a major event. Um, huh. Did you know that there's a major solar eclipse happening in 2024? <laughs> um, that's interesting, right? Um, could that uh, be the kickoff of something? Could that be um, an omen? Uh, you know, uh, something happening in advance uh, to uh, show us what might be coming down the pipe. Uh, there's an X uh, across, to, uh, across North America, United States, in, I, I do believe it's 2024. Maybe that's for another video, but I, I just, that came to mind. So this is a kind of a kickoff event. Um, and the stars of the heaven fell, even as the fig casts her untimely figs. It goes down, and then you look at the bottom there. I'm not showing it here. It goes down, uh, verse 13, 14, 16. Um, and then verse 17, For the great day of his wrath is come. So we start off up here with the saints saying, uh, Where are you, Lord? Uh, where are we here? Where are you, Lord, holy and true? Dost thou not judge? Um, how long, O Lord, dost you not judge and avenge our blood? I put a put a mark on that. Get rid of that. Thank you. There we go. So I'll have that marked. <clears throat> For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So it's not until after the sun uh, and the moon uh, go dark that the wrath of of God comes, or the great day. This is a reference to the great tribulation. So there's a tribulation, which is the seals of God in that first three and a half years, but prior to 2028. And then the second half in, uh, of that seven year period, the last three and a half years, the great tribulation, uh, kicking off in Re Revelation cha uh, chapter 6, verse 12. And then you've got the, the bold judgments uh, and so on. And so this is what I think is coming. So it is August, you know, 15th, 2023. Are we that close to the starting of the seven-year period? <laughs> I, I think we're close, uh, folks. I thought we were close two years ago. I thought we were close to the beginning of 
the pandemic. Isn't it interesting that all these things, these uh, waves, these birth pains are coming and we think they're big, but no, there's a bigger one to come. There's, there's a big wave and then there's respite for a while, for a time, for a period. And then a larger wave come, a larger birth pain comes, just like a woman in childbirth. So we thought the pandemic was big. Wait for the next wave that comes down the line. Uh, are we being set up? Are we being forewarned? Are we, uh, as Christians who are paying attention, are, are we getting our hearts ready? Are these for the purpose of those who are watching and listening to get their heart ready for what's just around the corner, what's about to come? And to get ready for it, to get your heart in the right place, to get your faith strengthened and ready, folks, for the first period. This 6,000 years ending in 2028, I think that makes a lot of sense. To me, it really does. And I don't know why I didn't see it before that uh, maybe, you know, it makes sense that God would give us that that full period. Um, because it, it speaks in the Bible about um, uh, the fullness of time and uh, the fullness of uh, those who are faithful. Let me go to, this is Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 10. Uh, let's, let's start up a little bit further here. Let's start up even further. Let's start at verse 3. Blessed be the God and uh, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, us the believers in Christ, chosen before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation, it says there, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. The gathering together. Is this the gathering together of the saints? both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. Fascinating. The dispensation of fullness of times is the year 6000, the year 2028, the fullness of times. God grants us that period. He does not cut it short, although for the elect, it will feel short. But he does not cut it short. He wants to give every opportunity. He doesn't want a person, a human, saying, you know what, if you just give me one more second, I would have came to Christ. If you just gave me a little bit more time, if if you had given, it, give us, given us the full amount of time, I would have came to you in my last breath, in my last second on earth. No, God uh, brings us together at the fullness of time. Uh, together, uh, gather together all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. So I believe this describes the fullness of time or the 6,000 years of man, just like the six days of creation and then the rest. God gives us right up until the year 6,000 uh, before the wrath falls. And that's also the time at which Satan sits on the, thir on the uh, throne in the third temple. Remember, the third temple is built at the beginning of the seven-year period at some point when some agreement is, agreement is made. <clears throat> and he lets the Jews uh, start their sacrifices, and then he causes them to cease. And then at the midpoint, he sits on the throne as, the, as God, uh, on the throne in the third temple, and he declares himself to be God. And that is the ultimate blasphemous event, which triggers. That is the red line. That is the end of 6,000 years. God says, that's it. That is the fullness of time. Now we're gathered together, the rapture of um, uh, the people in Christ. And the saints, remember in Revelation chapter 6, um, you know, the saints who uh, will uh, go up before us, the saints, uh, you know, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? Well, he does. Uh, and just before 
uh, the wrath of God falls because we're not we're not destined to uh, for the wrath. We're not going to be here for the wrath of God. So he has to take us out before he starts that wrath. And that happens at the end of 6,000 years of man. Somewhere around uh, 2028, I don't know exactly where, before or after, is it uh, Rosh Hashanah, you know, the high watch periods on the Jewish calendar? Is God even using the Jewish calendar? It could be, a, uh, it could be maybe the civil calendar. Uh, we know that the Jews perverted <clears throat> and changed the calendar, calendar that God originally uh, presented to them. So we don't know exactly when it's going to start. But I suggest to you that it's close, and we are close, and we could be, you know, as little as six months away from the seven-year period. I don't know, or, or, you know, for the first half. Now, that's a good thing, and it's a bad thing, um, because, you know, we don't want to see sorrow and hardship, um, but we will be tested for our faith. We've been a little bit fat, dumb, and happy, us in the Western world. Uh, our faith is lacking, and, uh, you know, when the Lord returns, he's going to say, you know, is there any faithful left? And I think it's a very true statement because we don't need God for anything in this Western world. We, we have our money. We have our jobs. We have our riches. We have our, uh, you know, our slaves, although we don't call them slaves, but those in lower classes, and we don't call them lower classes, uh, but there are classes of people, middle class, lower class, upper class, you know, the millionaires. And so we have, you know, that form of slaves where we live like kings and we live fat, dumb, and happy. We don't need faith. We don't need God. And so, will there be faith, the faithful left? Uh, there's going to be very few. And I'm just suggesting to you that we could be very close. I don't know. Um, but things are ramping up economically in terms of war all over the place, hot spots increasing. We thought they were increasing last year. We thought there was trouble in, uh, you know, during the pandemic with supply chains. Come to find out, it's getting worse now. And the things on the horizon are worse. And we're experiencing worse things. There's food shortages, there's gasoline, you know, prices, energy prices are skyrocketing because the wars and the rumors of wars that are happening, all culminating, I believe, uh, um, with a some sort of world war where an antichrist figure comes into place and maybe even suggests that he has communication and contact with aliens, with all the alien stories coming out, by the way. Uh, and he will be supernatural, and he will show some supernatural things to the people, um, so much so that they will believe him, at least uh, partially. And if they don't believe him, they will go along with him anyways with the Mark of the Beast system because they don't want to be disconnected from the economy. Um, those who are faithful will have nothing. We will not have bank accounts. We will not have money. We will not have food. We will have to have 100% faith in God, and we will need that faith in God to get through it, and we will have to rely on him for everything, absolutely everything during this period. So is this timeline correct? I don't know. You let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below, and I'm happy to have the conversation. Uh, things are kind of opening up in my mind as, as we get closer to this, and you know that's exactly what the Bible says in the last days. People will start figuring out, they will start seeing things, um, information and um, uh, you know, knowledge will increase in the last days. And I believe that pertains not only to technology and such, but also to uh, the understanding of uh, Bible prophecy. So I'll leave it there, guys. I've rambled enough. I think it's pretty exciting. I hope you do as well. Uh, I'll probably do a longer explanation of this and kind of go through more of the, the background and the, the, the uh, calendar timing of it, etc. in uh, another video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.